The role of police officers in schools has come under increasing scrutiny as communities across the country respond to calls for racial justice and reevaluate student safety. In Los Angeles, student activists played a major role in getting the school district to move away from funding police in schools. Julia Escobar from the NewsHour's Student Reporting Lab's Youth Journalism Program at Venice High School has the story. After George Floyd's murder, the call to get police out of public schools grew much louder. There is no reason why we need school police officers in our schools. They don't help us. Kalila Williams is a senior at Girls Academic Leadership Academy in Los Angeles. She's a part of a group of activists known as Students Deserve who have succeeded in getting millions of dollars diverted from police in the nation's second largest school district. A lot of people undermined us as students saying that, you know, there's no way that students can make this happen. But they did. Student and community activists successfully pushed the Los Angeles Unified School Board to divert $25 million from law enforcement. That's about a third of what the district had been spending on its school police force. Black students feel criminalized, have been pepper sprayed, arrested. What else do you need? The cuts mean more than 100 officers were laid off and the use of pepper spray was banned. Officers used to be stationed at every high school and middle school, but now they will no longer be present on campuses, although they will still be on call to respond to problems. The board voted in February to use the divested money specifically to support Black students. As a part of the district's ongoing efforts to address systemic racism, the funds will go to LA schools that serve predominantly students of color, and the district is now hiring more counselors and staff to provide social-emotional support. Nick Mavoin is a school board member who supported the change. We are a school district that is 89% of color. Um, I'm a straight white man. I don't have the lived experience of all of our students. And so listening to them was so powerful and actually understanding how my decisions were affecting their lives. You know, I don't want to do anything around a school police officer. And, you know, people may seem like, oh, that's a good thing. That means there's no crime. There's no drugs. There's no this. But what that means for Black students is that's more trauma more fear. They're scared when they're on campus. Pedro Nogueira is the dean of USC's Rosser School of Education. He's a sociologist who has studied disparities in the education system. Schools have to be safe. No one can learn in an unsafe environment or even a chaotic environment, right? You know, we need safety and order for learning. Question is, what produces safety and order? Mani Sifas Luce is another student activist who believes having police on school campuses does not mean students are actually safe. What safety is, is being able to be who you are without fear that somebody else who doesn't understand you is going to threaten you. But Sergeant Rudy Perez sees his job differently. He joined the district's police department 20 years ago. He grew up in Guatemala where he saw corruption among police. But when he came to the U.S. and attended Los Angeles schools, he says the police officer at his high school inspired him to stay on track. And he wanted to do the same for others. I love to mentor, lead, and protect kids safely through graduation. That's what I live with. One criticism of school police is that like, when you have a, like, a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Why, like, what would you say to people who argue that police officers are just like the wrong tools to have in schools? A teacher, you should have the ability to de-escalate this fight. Don't call the police till somebody gets hurt or now there's a victim. Perez did not lose his job in the layoffs, but he believes the decision to divest money was unfair to law enforcement. It was done for something that happened in Minnesota and it didn't happen here. It didn't matter whether you were a park ranger police officer. It didn't matter if you were municipality. It didn't matter whatever it was. The badge and the, and the uniform got demonized. Just by virtue of having a police officer on campus, you increase the likelihood that kids will be arrested for things that they should have never been arrested before. According to the American Civil Liberties Union, students are three and a half times more likely to get arrested on school campuses where police are present compared to those without. I'm not against um, having law enforcement around if their job is to keep the school safe. But when you see law enforcement doing the work of school administrators, then, then it's inappropriate. Similar conversations about police and schools are happening in at least half a dozen other major cities around the country. So it was like a celebration for LAUSD, but I also hoped that it was gonna be a celebration for things that could come in other places. $25 million will now be supporting positions and programs designed to help Black and Brown students feel safer in schools. 
but that money is less than 1% of the district's $7.5 billion annual budget. The changes happening here are now allowing for a larger conversation about how best to support students in all aspects of their educational experience. I'm just amazed that this actually happened. I like I never doubted us, but knowing that this is actually like for real is just um, an amazing feeling. For the PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs, I'm Julia Escobar. An important story worth exploring further. And there is more to explore from our student reporting labs. A new podcast, On Our Minds, with Noah and Zion, offers a unique opportunity to show what mental health really looks like for young people, what kind of services are available to them, and the real stories behind the statistics. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts.